In this video, I show you how to auto-populate data based on what you select from a drop-down list like this. Now, it's pretty easy in only three steps. Let's dive in. This principle can be used in any kind of template or form or whatever where you need to auto-populate some cells based on something else. So based on whatever the user writes into a cell or selects from a drop-down. In this case, it's just an order confirmation where we have a customer list or a customer database. This is a simple one with a customer name, address, contact, contact phone, etc. And we need to fill out that information automatically when we pick the actual customer from a drop-down list up here. So the first step is obviously to insert a drop-down list you do that from the data tab and click on data validation the button you don't have to click here just click the button up here and select the list now pick a source for the list and in this case it's over here on the customer list because it's the customer names so let's just select a good amount of those here so we can actually fill out the the customer names here in the customer list and then those names will also be included in the drop down click ok and now you can just pick a customer from this list that was pretty easy let's move on to step number two which is to insert a lookup function in the cells that needs to be automatically populated and you can pick any lookup function you want it could be index match uh, x lookup I'm, I'm gonna go with vlookup here so write equal vlookup open parenthesis and now you might not know much about the vlookup function and uh, you can learn that from another video but i'm just gonna walk you through it pretty quickly here so the first argument of the vlookup function is the lookup value and that is what you are searching for you are searching for the customer name and that is gonna be up here in C3. So point to that and make a reference. Then go to the next argument with a comma and that is the table array. And the table array is where you wanna search for that, in this case, customer name. But it's also gonna include where you want to return data from. In other words, it's just the entire data set over here, customer list select everything from column a through f and you can continue the formula up here in the formula bar and you can see the entire table array up here so vlookup searches for the lookup value which is the customer name in the first column of the table array and the first column is column a so that's cool it's going to search for the customer names in the customer name column that's a good thing then it's going to return something that is also within the data set and what it's going to return is determined from the column index number which is the third argument here the call index number so if you want to return the address which we want here you will need to pick column number two which is column b in this case let me see if i can move this up here yeah like this so you can't pick a column here. You need to write a number. So write two, which is, uh, this is column one, two, three, four, five, six. So column two would be the address and we want to return the address here. So that is good. Now, the last argument is the range lookup argument and that is either true or false. In 99% of all instances where you use the VLOOKUP function, you will use the false argument here. So, or, or the false option here. So you can just write false and close parenthesis. You don't need to know the difference between them because when doing this, you will always need to write false. So that's the VLOOKUP function, hit enter. And there we have it. Now it doesn't find anything because we need to pick a customer like this. And now it actually works, pretty cool. Now you probably noticed what happens here when there's nothing in the customer name and you get this NA error and it's pretty ugly. I'm going to show you in just a minute how to fix that. But before that, we will need to continue writing this VLOOKUP function in the other uh, cells we want to populate as well. You can actually just copy this, select it up here and control C, hit enter and then double click here, control V, do the same here, double click, control V, and then you can change the column index number so you return something else so let's just check what we really want to return here we have the contact and the contact phone 
and the contact is over here in the third column in the data set and the contact phone is in the fourth column of the data set. So go back here, change this to the third column, hit enter, change this to the fourth column and hit enter. And there we go. Now it actually works. Now, before we move on to step number three, please, if you like this video so far, consider subscribing to the channel. It will help me a lot. Okay, so the third step here is to actually make it pretty. So in most instances where you will need to use this or where other people will need to use this, it will be blank when they open this template or fillable form or whatever it is. So you don't really want these to show because it'll confuse the user and you don't want that. So you can add the if error function over here to wrap around the VLOOKUP function if error, open parenthesis, and then the value argument of if, if error is simply the VLOOKUP function over here. And after that, write a comma and then just double quotes. And this just means that if the VLOOKUP function returns an error, and it does because there's nothing to, to actually search for, then it will hide this error. As you can see, it does now. Let's do this for the rest like this. And there we have it. A auto populating form here that grabs data from a customer list over here and puts it in these cells based on what you select from a drop down. Pretty cool. You can do all sorts of things with lookup functions, especially if you dive into the more advanced lookup functions like XLOOKUP that you can learn up here in this video or index match that you can learn in this video right here. Thank you so much for watching. See you.